Why do you cut so close to your rope? Oh, I do that because I have a branch there that I need to cut off. Insanely good cutting. Yeah. What do you think? Yeah, it'll hold you. Poison oak looks lovely this time of year. should do this or to do this but when I do I always make sure that my gate is on the off see if there's any questions in the comment section I would rarely answer I don't have time all right the most recent comment on big black oak threatens home part three PDC says when it's that enormous above the ground, how big are roots uh, underground? Um, how I, big are roots underground also close to the house? How super big? huge. Big roots everywhere. Yeah. And and that tree, the, the tree was damaged by the construction of all that new sidewalk. And so everyone who hates on me for cutting the tree down because it was split in half, doesn't even know that the roots were all hammered from them doing new construction and the tips were starting to die back mm -hmm. and they were roots were rotted from years of overwatering the lawn so they judge us but they don't know the whole story they look through the little keyhole and they think they got it all figured out next uh, Dragan feels sorry for the chipper Oh yeah. I'm assuming we chipped big wood on that. That job. chipper was just a demo. So it was meant for some a little abuse. Just to see. Why do people that do videos blast junky to me music over natural sounds? They clicked off. Ron. Why? Ron, why'd you click off? Why do we why do we put the junky music on? Yeah, why do people blast junky music to him that covers the natural sounds? We don't know what music you like, so it's not on my list of things to do to make everybody happy. Are you happy? Yeah. Okay, that's what I care about. Yeah. And they should care that you're doing what you love to. Well, you can always turn the volume down if you don't. Or yeah. just go watch another thing. Or hold your chainsaw in your living room while you're watching it, turn the video down, and then rev it every time there's a cut being made. Good old freedom. I'm sure yeah. the wife would appreciate all the natural mm -hmm. sounds too. I saw a comment that said, my wife thinks I'm watching motorcycle videos. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Smiling Stone. Hey August, thank you for sharing your invaluable knowledge and experience. My old supervisor used to say that there are two types of climbers. One that thinks they're a God's gift to earth and those who are there to get the job done. To get the job done safe and go home. I surely know which kind you are. I was green when I got the job and was lucky to work with a humble mentor, wishing there was more folks like you and your crew in the industry. St 
stay safe, but hope you inspire more and more folks to be properly educated, <clears throat> attentive, and most importantly, careful. Florida man. Florida man. Thank you, Florida man. Uh, I got a question. What? How come invaluable <coughs> is a good thing when incompetent is a bad thing. So, when you put in on the front of a word, like, ingenious, how come you take a good word like genius and make it even better, but when you put in on competent, which is also a good word, you make it work? Huh? Invaluable, incompetent, ingenious, ingenuity. Somebody way back when was sitting down in a little office with a group of people coming up with words or something, and they decided to switch it up on us. They were like, no one will know. No one will ever know. <laughs> Who has to know? <laughs> yeah, who's going who's gonna to ever ask that? They'll never know. Yeah. We want to know who you are that made those words up. Job senior from Daniel Navarro Molina. Thanks, okay. Daniel. That guy sent me yep. some chickens one time in the mail. Um, <coughs> Damien did good despite the mistake. Uh, which mistake? Which video is this? Oh, this. <laughs> it looks like a picture of you about to slip out in the road. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Did we document that? Yeah. Good. When you bomb Good. that top with no rigging on it? Glad no one was seriously hurt. Maybe some pride. Yeah, there was a little bit of pride hurt on that one. That was a painful... I... That was... I still interesting, got a I still got of, a bone chip. That was probably one of, one of our most interesting days. Yeah. Because it was like one little thing happened, and then mindset went from, oh man, what just happened there, and then moved right into the next spot, and, and totally spaced some pretty important. But it all worked out. But uh, yeah, I was going to say, things always work out the way, uh, probably not the way they're supposed to, but I mean safe to say there was maybe I needed a learning lesson that day I guess we all did okay <laughs> Robert Thomas says nothing like watching people who have things under control you know that Respect. last video that one that where we had the mistakes so many times I've thought about taking that video down just because I hate <laughs> The critics that that miss the point. Yeah. You know, if somebody shows you, hey, look, I made a mistake, and then you're all, you're a stupid idiot. You, you suck. <laughs> it's like <laughs> your your uh, maturity level has to be so teensy weensy. And then they go right into a back cut with no face cut on some big leaner with a farm boss, and it happens to somehow go in the vicinity of where they wanted. But in their defense, isn't it kind of hard to watch a video where somebody is not somebody that's hard to watch, like somebody that's screwing up? Isn't it just like, ah, oh, you just want to just say something or yeah. click away or... You know, and I, I feel like somebody that's really going to say negative things about the comments, which I don't really see anything reason to really come around and say negative things because you know you, you literally put it out there and show look I sucked this day mm -hmm. you know um, in Dude. the kindest way you know but we hey, do have look, a really we, good we make mistakes you know um, yeah but our mostly we, we're showing the truth of it yeah the track record is pretty legit when you consider what we're doing 
Mm -hmm. I'm not trying to justify a mistake, but I'm just saying, what do you expect from a dude? Yeah. Um, if there was never a mistake shown, then you would know they were full of it. Yeah. Yeah, you'd, you'd say, I wonder what kind of footage they got on that on that one memory card that's literally nothing but fail videos. Mm, I've even showed the worst they're... mistakes. Remember that one with Joe? Yeah. Shoo! Yeah. He just got, got killed. Uh, somebody named Homeowner. Oh wait, never mind. That's not his name. <laughs> that's the here video. I thought his his name on YouTube was called Homeowner Fires Sketchy Contractor for oh. Damages. No. So on that video, Sherry Wright says, wow, he has a big bar on that saw. At least she called it a bar. Mm -hmm. So many people call it a blade and they mark themselves. A lot of the trolls, they'll, they'll, uh -huh. they'll make a real critical comment and then they'll, they'll say blade. Yeah, like Which just totally here. brands them as brand new. Um, Fill in the blank. I'm not gonna. Michael finish. Hall says on. Uh, Should I go forward? Uh, left. <clears throat> on the metal sport wheels, born to be wild video. Uh, Michael Hall says, I know it's an older video. But it's still bad A. One of my favorites. Awesome editing. Yeah, that that video, I put a lot of detail into the edit. That one was cool. I like the one where Adam's zipping around on the bottom and then uh -huh. you got like this little green yeah. flash that just shows Adam like groundman rocket. Yeah, so <laughs> he was wearing a yellow or green shirt or yeah, something like, like that green. and I put like this effect on the color of it mm -hmm. that made it like shimmery shimmer or sparkle <laughs> and then I speeded up the film and then everywhere he went and he looked like some kind of or some kind of laser light <laughs> yeah yeah and I also okay you had some really good transitions in that video the music was good. Um, it was pretty cinematic with like the chick. Yeah, that that girl in that video was actually a professional. Like that was a pro video that he had made, mm -hmm. and she was like this model for. Yeah, so you were using part of his. Mm -hmm. I was using his work. Using his work to showcase him. Yeah. And his little niche. Yeah. Which happened to be motorcycle rims. Yeah, and he seemed. Um, and tires. Seemed like he did a good job and did decent doing it. He was selling rims for like <laughs> $10,000 a piece. Yeah. Chopper rims. Mm hmm. Because they were like the size of a wagon wheel. And, yeah, they were the giant ones. Yeah, and you couldn't get them anywhere else. And then I also liked uh, how you overlapped the audio for your chainsaw and <laughs> used like some Harley, some, yeah, I, some I, Harley noise. I, I used Harley revs for the chainsaw noise. Yeah, that, that was pretty yeah. cool. And that, that I forgot I about that. Too. Oh yeah, and I liked I liked the tree work part too because mm -hmm. that was actually a really cool job. You were gonna have some pretty big pieces. YouTube, I've shown you before how these ponderosa pine limbs, you can peel them and they'll hang. You can even get them swinging and then cut them off at the key time and have them swing out. Well, these power lines here would mean that I shouldn't do that. So the ones that go this way, I wouldn't want to swing them and then cut them off and have them travel over there and get across those wires. Should have made the tree into a sculpture. Not my tree. 
Somebody thought it was so cool how they do that. Joel W. says, sometimes when things are repeatedly going wrong, the best thing to do is stop work and reassess what is going on. That's pretty much when we stopped assigning big, big technical jobs on a Monday. Yes. Interesting. Yeah, I forgot about that. And then we just, we kind of just moved that over to like business day. Yeah. And maintenance so, day and... So YouTube, check it out. Wrap up smaller jobs day. That is, I totally forgot about that. But that video I have about morale, bad morale leading to an injury, leading to whatever, I don't remember what it's called, but it was a series of mistakes that made for kind of a good day turn bad. We decided after that day to never do a, a bigger job on a Monday. A job that required like too much brain power or, or a decent amount of like hustle and bustle I guess also you don't want to treat an easy job like nothing can go wrong I'm not saying you should be complacent but if it's kind of a hustle and bustle job with a lot of cutting and a lot of big moves like that was a big treat mm -hmm. right over the guy's house mm -hmm. anyway we don't do it on Monday no more It's all in the timing. Get it going. See, I don't want to hit the gate or the flag. I guess we could move the flag, but the guy, the guy says, all I care about is the gate. So I wouldn't want to fall it on the gate. So get it moving a little bit and then cut it off. Don't want to move it too far. When it comes off, it might swing over onto those wires. All about the timing. This would actually be a decent job for the bucket truck probably, but if you could sit there in the bucket and get both these trees, but it's a super long drive today. Nobody wants to drive the bucket truck that far. we have all these other jobs that either you know you got to wrap it up by bringing the stump grinder in or something because the way it was sectioned out or you have smaller jobs that you're thinking well we're not going to do these the same day we do a big job so we'll schedule two or three smaller jobs to fill out a day so it's a pretty good way to you know come back from the weekend feel good about you know what you're doing and the morale and you're not really overworking <clears throat> you know overworking yourself but you're like getting the blood pumping and you're still you're still thinking and kind of getting warmed up for the week and then yeah we try most to days, Tuesday or Wednesday between Tuesday Wednesday and Thursday we do our biggest jobs and then Friday if we've got no cleanups or something like that we try to wrap up Friday with like so we try to try to ease into the week and out of the week Monday's a little bit more chill. Friday's a little bit more chill. Yeah, if possible. Black Equinox says, can't you just dump wood glue in the crack and call it good? Yeah. <laughs> Concrete? Uh, there was a tree that was splitting in half. There was a lot wrong with that tree and that was just one detail. That's all I'm gonna say about that. Here's a negative one that's not even worth mentioning. Uh, see, if you want to get mentioned, say something positive. Okay. So you got Johnny B, who says nobody is perfect. When mistakes happen, the best thing to do is learn from it. And I think that's pretty much exactly what we did. Yeah. And we've even just discussed our whole method of trying yeah. to stay away from situations like that. 
pays off. of wood on that tree uh, six or eight which, or it was a uh, huge tree is a big oak tree in Rogue River yeah. he got so much wood so we chipped a couple to demo this uh, big chipper we were showing what the chipper could do and so we chipped a couple big long ones and we videoed it real time um, because we were demoing a chipper and we were Part of what we did for the company was to show on YouTube what the chipper was capable of. And the people wanted chips. And the best wood chips come from wood. So we gave them a bunch of wood chips and a bunch of uh, wood. Like so much that <laughs> it'll rot before they get to it. Yeah. We left it in a big pile. And then yeah. people get on YouTube and they want to like, what's he say? I thought they wanted wood. They got wood. I mean, they got so much wood. We gave them a sticker that said what, got what do you, wood. Why do you say that? Or you got wood. What kind of comment is that? It's kind of like saying, boy, it's a sunny day today. And then the, and then the guy is all, he gets argumentative. I thought you wanted sunshine today. <laughs> yeah. You know, it just yeah. even makes sense. Yeah. I just heard somebody comment, why are you turning all those limbs into chips when they could be firewood? There's no need for an AX-19. I'm just over here. shredded stud mm -hmm. yeah That's so thanks for that um, oh and that was a good video that's probably the best video I ever made <laughs> this next guy fifth of oh I'm gonna hang right so, take left. A left I'm gonna hang left a left then it looks like an immediate right then an immediate left in his driveway right here <laughs> always uh, turn on the further to the end I always turn on the uh, windshield wipers when I'm making a left turn. It's like an additional signal. <laughs> for the people. For anybody in front coming of this us. way. 
If I turn my wipers on, they go to the left, okay? And yes, they also go back to the right. You stop them so that you always make it swipe a certain way. <laughs> like if you want them to swipe yeah. left, you gotta keep them. You keep them awkwardly over on their. I don't think swing. these do that. I think you'd have to turn off the motor. Or something. Yeah. This one a little bit close to the wires. I'll swing it back. See, kind of peel it that way. If I had felt it just flat, peeled it out and dropped it flat, it might get hung up in that oak tree. Timing again. Less hang ups to deal with later. Okay. To the non tree climbing people, this looks like, you know, some thought goes into it or something. But to the tree people who do this kind of stuff, this is about as gravy as it gets. for pine to pop off like that, especially a little branch. See the timing there? My camera's under there, so I don't want to hit it. So I'm all zing, get it going, and then cut it off. Why do you cut so close to your rope? Oh, I do that because I have a branch there that I need to cut off. Hmm. Electric saw, battery saw is pretty powerful to be able to do that. To, um, it's kind of like a slice when you get something going and then you have to finish the cut as it's moving. I really like this Husky saw. I think the price is pretty high, but Maybe that'll come down with a little bit of time, you know? I don't know. When you're coming to a place like this, you know, up in a tree, you just want whatever you can get that's really good. Right in the hole. about um, the guy wanting wood. I was thinking that from at the start, why chip the wood? Waste. Cut it into logs or firewood. Firewood. And halfway in, <laughs> we start chipping the wood. Is it? Uh, no, it's right here on the left. It's those two pines. This left? Yeah. 
straight in? Yep. Yeah, that guy. And halfway in. He noticed that he was commenting too soon, so he's like a reasonable guy. <laughs> yeah. That's pretty good. Is this a good spot? Yeah, we want to be just in far enough for them to get the uh, skid steer past. There's your soundtrack for the day, YouTube. We'll go cut some trees. Planted. The slice is like that. You gotta get going. You don't want to cut it off right away or it'll beat you to death as it goes past. But you get it tipping. You get it right where you want without being parallel to the ground. And then cut it off and it'll drop like a spear. Kind of handy for that spot. Insanely good cutting. Such a, such a legit battery saw. I mean, come on. Why am I talking about it? Because it is. Did they pay me? Do I even know anybody at Husky? No, they did not. And I know nobody there. Nor do I, I mean, my license plate says S-T-I-H-L. That's the fan I am. But this is sweet. I mean, come on, who wouldn't like that? Who wouldn't want to cut like that? Pick it up and use it? Husky, you know, come to think of it, you should be paying me. I'm talking too much about your stuff here. But then again, you made a good thing. You don't gotta pay me. Your thing does its own work out there. The thing you made talks for itself, Husky. Ta-da. So, I just thought of a comment that somebody made in one of my videos. They say, they say if, your, if your climb rope is like that on the spar, how do you, uh, what did they say? They said, what are you going to do if you like cut your flip line or something? So to answer your question, if I cut my flip line, which by the way has cable in it, if I did cut it, which is possible, and, I, and all I had was this, I would just call down and say, give me another flip line, or I'd make one out of the other end of my rope or something. But what I think he was asking was, how are you gonna repel? Like, let's say a better question would be, if I, if I was bleeding out and I had to repel quickly, you wouldn't be able to repel like this, and that's probably what he was wondering. So I'd have to be set up SRT, to repel out right now if if I had to leave in a hurry if I got cut or something but I have this set up as a backup so that I'm not just climbing with one point of attachment with the, running a saw um, if I wanted it to be set up for quick escape then that would be the, an additional safety precaution that you could do if you wanted myself I'm very mindful of where the saw is and um, and I'm not going to cut myself. Somebody will say, well, you can't plan everything. You, you need to have a contingency plan. Well, 
I have a few. I just don't have all of them, you know? I like the idea. Shoot, why not? Have yourself always a ready line to bail out of the tree in a moment's notice. I mean, I've been all of a sudden into a hornet's nest and had a swarm of bald-faced hornets just tearing me up and I don't know what I did. I figured it out. I've been cut in the tree and rain and blood. I had to come down. I don't remember what I did. I came down, but you know, what would I have done? If I was in this situation, I would have to I would have to be tied in SRT to immediately come down because there's no limb on the backside to go over for DRT. Or well I'm not gonna even say the other thing that I would do, but I would do it. And the reason I'm not gonna say is I don't want somebody doing it that doesn't know how it's kind of a it's a way you carve a tie-in point in the top of your tree and i'm not going to show you so find another way i fell beside the wires right there use the brush piles to protect the asphalt and it bounced and then rolled over a little bit but that's it for that Maybe it'll look flatter on YouTube. That'd be cool. I'm counting on your editing skills. We'll see how good you are. Do like we always do. Edit them flat. <laughs> there. Little focus on flatness that time. All right, you guys. I kind of just choked my way up and uh, ran DRT over some limbs, but you know, if you're coming down real quick in a pinch, um, you can set up like this. I've just got two carabiners, so I've got enough distance. And I've got a munter going through here. I'm not saying you should do this or to do this, but when I do, I always make sure that my gate is on the opposite side of the section that's rotating so that this isn't pushing up and twisting the gate. So I've got it configured right where it's pretty foolproof for me, but it allows me to just come down SRT with a zigzag and just a carabiner. You wouldn't care, you would not climb like this all day, like you could with a wrench, but just to come down, it's pretty smooth. Now we'll follow this thing. So YouTube, the, the massive open face cut here with pine, you keep it right on the stump. We got asphalt here. So the big open face cut makes it so that the log stays on the stump. He'll have to actually cut that hinge off. And then of course, over here, we got this log, which protects the driveway all the way across. Bust the log, don't care. It's all chips. Quarter inch area. Let's put it 
Dee. Here we go. Wow, rock star. That's what you get. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Brett. Thanks, Brett. Thanks, Brett. Monkey, be dumb, dumb.